in the previous installment of Ugly Woodcraft, we did a very ugly pot hanger. And today I'm going to show you how to actually do that pot hanger nicely for those of you who want it to look nice. Now, I am in a pine forest, so I will be using pine. Um, and someone may not appreciate that. Now, if you can find literally anything else, which I probably can, I'm actually looking at a sapling here that might might be uh, used for the video, um, that'd be better. Pine is, is, is okay, but it does light very easily. So if it's the only thing you have, that's fine, but I will tell you now you're not going to get a lot of time use out of it. Pine's resin is very, very flammable. All right, guys, so in that previous installment, we also talked about... Um, with this pot hanger we're going to be building here, we also had the OPSG Products chair out. Now, um, that's just a bushcraft chair, and I wanted to show you something that was kind of along the lines of Ugly Woodcraft as well. I kind of made it as crappily as I could, and I didn't think about how crappy it was because I also put it in the sand, and when I put it in the sand, it did not do very well. It's not the chair's fault. It's my fault. I will be the first to tell you now um, if you try to use this chair in the sand, you can't do crappy woodcraft. You need to do it really well. And, uh, that's what I did here. So this right here, what I, my rule of thumb is, because your arms and your legs are generally the same length on, on most people. You take your fingers and you hold it flat against your body. And it should come up to about your chin. For me, that's how I like these. Now you can also do the rule... Drop my knife, that's very dangerous, don't ever do that. You can also do the rule of, um, I'm trying to step back here, I'm touching the ground. I like to come up to about here, at about my groin weight, about my groin level here, okay? And the reason why I do that is, I live in a location where this is going to sink into the ground a little bit. So I give myself about yay much from here to here to sink into the ground. And that way, when I go to use the chair, it's not kicking my butt. Now, <clears throat> in, the, in the last video, we also talked about, or we also, you also saw me carving around this. I'm going to start doing that now while we talk to save time. But the reason why I'm doing that is so that I don't wear spots in my chair. Um, canvas is a very strong material, and anybody that makes it is still making it out of canvas. There is better and worse makers out there but at the end of the day canvas still is a material like everything else on the planet and um, it will at some point start to fail if you don't take care of it so what I do is I round my tops off so that way there's no hard pots for this to uh, start wearing into my little armholes <clears throat> so you see I made that I kind of rounded that off that's going to help the longevity of your chair significantly. I also want to tell you something. If you're using hardwoods like I am right now, okay, this is a time of the year when the sap is flowing. If the month does not have an R in the name, for example, right now we are in June. The sap is flowing. This is a good time to be fleshing these. It is significantly easier. For example, right here, no problem. Comes right off. Yes, I have an extremely sharp Kephart knife. That does help, but you're going to be able to cut and carve a lot quicker and a lot better on green wood now than you will in the winter months or the or the or the you know the, or the, the later months when the spring excuse me when the sap is no longer flowing. If the month has an R in the name, you're going to find it to be a lot harder to do. <clears throat> Not impossible, just harder. Right now, it's really easy. You don't even like. I mean, look, I could take my fingers and just carve. It comes right off. I can't do that in the winter time. I just wanted to give you some food for thought if you're getting into bushcraft and you're and you're seeing me do this with ease. Yes, I do have a nice knife. Yes, I've been I'm very good at knife angles and how to use a knife, but I am also supplementing that with this time of year, which is the time to be doing your new bushcraft. When you want to be learning something, go ahead and start with the months that don't have an R in them. It's a little warmer, yes, but you're going to be able to carve a lot easier and get the concept down before the winter comes and it's really hard and your fingers are cold. Just food for thought. I'm going to go ahead and do this to the other three, or excuse me, the other two, and then we're going to get our bushcraft chair set up. Stand by. 
All right, guys, so we got our chair set up here, and uh, I'm getting better with it. Uh, I've always brought a sitting pad with me, so this, this bushcraft chair concept is a little new. I have sat on them before with somebody else putting them together, so I knew they were very comfortable. But I have not uh, owned one before, so I wanted to make that very clear. I'm, I'm testing this chair uh, for my own personal use, and I will say that OPSG products makes a very forgiving chair and I say that because if you don't know what you're doing where like for me this is my first time using the bushcraft chair like build well I say my second time now actually building the bushcraft chair um, it's a lot more forgiving on non sandy ground uh, this is the part of bushcraft I don't get into which is the bushcraft chair I usually just sit on the ground or sit on a log or bring a sit pad or whatever so it's nice to be up and off of the ground and like you know like up at a regular level um, and so for a new bushcrafter, I'd recommend it because it's just another way to learn lashings. And it's a great way to sit. Um, it's a lot more comfortable, especially once you put a little more mileage on your body. Like I've hiked the whole AT, so this is really comfortable for me because my knees hurt <laughs> when I get up and down like that. Um, all that to be said, let's get into this pot hanger. And uh, I'm going to talk to you first. I'm going gonna, have, I'm gonna to be making a small fire today, so I'm going to make a small pot hanger but you could extend this to as big a fire as you'd want to. Now you're gonna to wanna to use green wood. So for those of you who are here to learn about how to really make a good bush pot hanger, here we are, okay? I did not pick an extremely straight stick for the actual pot hangings end because it does not matter. It just simply doesn't matter. And I didn't feel like killing a second tree just to make a point about how straight a stick can be. We all have seen a straight stick, we all have seen a non-straight stick. If you're here for this part of the channel, for this part of the video, I expect you to understand that that little nuance. As a good woodsman, pick and choose your battles, okay? So for me today, I picked a tree that had a stick that I needed, but it's not extremely straight for the actual hanging, the you know, the, the horizontal hanging stick. So let's go ahead and get our stick shaved up and clean first. And before we even start that, when you cut your stick down, if you're not using a hatchet of some type and you're using a saw like a silky or a pocket boy or whatever a laplander cut it at an extremely steep angle so you want to kind of slice it and i'm about to show you what i'm talking about here stand by you want to slice your stick at an extremely steep angle like this here this is actually not steep enough i just got lazy and didn't feel like cutting it but that's going to help you pound this into the ground later if you don't have some kind of hatchet to turn this into a spike. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and make this a little more steep and we're going to go from there. Um, I also wanted to tell you, if you're using a sapling like this one, definitely do not. I know it's enticing to think that, well, this is a smaller end, so I'll put that in the ground. Do not do that. Put the fatter end in the ground and the reason why is we're using um, friction to make this pot hanger so if your friction drops if your friction if the surface of your friction area drops as it gets closer to the ground that means that the closer your pot gets to the ground the more of an angle it's going to be at and the less friction it's going to have to hold itself so a, holder, a bigger pot's not going to be holdable put the fat end in the ground it will help you out okay do not be enticed I'm going to say it again do not be enticed to put the skinny end in the ground yeah, up front it's nice and comfortable, but after you do it, you're going to hate yourself because this does not take 10 seconds to make if you're doing it nicely, all right? <clears throat> also, remember your Y branch. Like I said, this is green wood, um, and this is just what was on there. I'm making a tiny fire for a tiny pot, so I'm not going to be making... It doesn't need to be nice and straight and thick. Consider that when you're out there. If your bush pot is like a uh, Swiss a Swiss military or a Eastern... Uh, a, in East Germany or a, or a um, what else is out there the Italian even is kind of it's a little bit water dense to have a stick this skinny um, for the pot hanger itself the pot the, the the pole I'm gonna make it thick because I plan on showing you how to make an, an extended version but particularly because like I said I didn't want to cut down two trees I have a good size for my pot that I'm hanging Make sure that if you, the bigger the pot you're hanging, the thicker it is. So consider, once you see what pot I'm hanging, use that in your head and say, okay, for that size pot, this is good. If it goes bigger, I need to go bigger. All right, let's get into it. Safety first, kids. Put your gloves on. You're out in the woods. 
you're not a sissy boy or a sissy girl for doing this. What you're doing is you're stopping yourself from getting hurt in a location in which it would be much harder to do self-aid and to get to a location if you get really injured. Um, I mess with sharp knives. I don't mess with dull knives because dull knives are dangerous. Okay, so understand that that sharp knife is a dangerous piece of equipment if you don't, you know, protect yourself. Watch Blackie's video on how to actually sit and stuff like that while you are carving because he's already done a very extensive video on it and I don't feel as though you guys are going to get it as well from me. Long story short, your blade should be at minimum past the three quarter mark of your legs. I like to carve it's leaning forward uh, where my blade never goes beyond my knees because my I have veins back here that will kill me if they get sliced. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't want my jugular to get clapped, to get sliced. That is just not something I find appetizing. Now we're going to go ahead and take this stick here and we're going to shave it. We're going to shave it down to where it's nothing but raw. You want to get past that fleshy membrane and everything. You just want raw wood and I'll show you why. So follow along. Go ahead and do that and I'm going to get back with you. Now, if you're following with me while I'm carving, you see how I have white and I have brown. Get rid of as much brown as you reasonably can, as you, can, as you reasonably can, because it's going to get in the way here in a little bit. In turn, it's actually going to help you for friction, but it's also going to cause problems for you with friction, due to the fact that you want to gonna, you're going to want to be able to slide this pot hanger around. You're going to want to be able to slide it around the stick. Too much friction can be a bad thing, and this will also end up drying on you and lighting this aflame. So if you get rid of all the things, what I'm talking about here, this brown stuff is a membrane, and then this stuff, the, the bark will dry if you're using this long enough, and it will start to light this stick aflame. Now if you get rid of all this, all it's going to do is harden the stick, like you would fire harden a spear. So consider this a spear right now, and make sure you get all the flesh off of there so you can fire harden it as opposed to, to let this all dry and turn it into a tinder box making this a fire stick. Don't do that. Get all the brown off, get all the char, get all the uh, bark off, and that's going to be a better pot hanger for you. Stay tuned. Um, this is the second tree I chopped down because it was dead. Um, or, or in the process of dying, it's very dry, which is really the reason why I was telling you all to shave this down. But it's good practice, even with green sticks, if you're going to be at the campsite more than one or two days, uh, cooking more than. I would say if you're going to have a constant fire going in the winter time, or you're going to be there in the summer for more than a day, cooking over the fire more than twice, I would say go ahead and do this practice where you get rid of all, a minimum all the bark towards the bottom of the tree. So we're, I'm going to have about that much of it out and that much of it in the ground. The bottom of the tree don't really matter, but I will tell you, you're going to want to get the bark off this because that's friction that you're going to have to fight pushing this into the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and debark the end of this, and if there's brown left on the bottom end that's going into the ground, it's not a big deal, okay? Go ahead and get that cleaned up real quick. And again, guys, don't look at the time that it takes me to do this and think that if you're faster than me, you're better, or if you're slower than me, you suck. I'm just doing this at a leisurely pace, and you don't have to do it this fast if you're brand new to this. You don't, you really don't. And if you can do it faster, effectively, then more, more power to you. If you have a method, then tell everybody in the comments. I might even use it. I'm not above learning. Um, I've been taught a few things about camping in the past two years, really good, cool things that have helped my quality of camp life expand from viewers like you who want to know how to do this better and say, well, hey, I've already been doing it and I thought maybe I'd give, your gander, give you a gander. Uh, this just channel is about growth is what I'm getting at. And uh, I'm not opposed, like I said, to being taught something. Leave it in the comments section. I uh, never take criticism in a bad light unless you come after me just to come after me, um, like some people have done. But those of you who say, hey, this is more of a criticism, you know, you don't necessarily have to make that known, but definitely let me know. Because if I didn't, if I already knew it and I didn't say it, somebody else may not know it and need to hear it. Now, all that to be said, we've got our stick. It's very well kept. If you've got any little 
tiny, uh, I like to call them feathers. Just like a feather stick. You see I got some feathers right here. Go away from the cut. So you see how you were cutting this way. Go away from the cut and get rid of your feathers. And it'll make your life a little bit easier. If you make another feather, just shave it off. But normally, it's easier to go away from the cut and shave the feather in. And as opposed to keep making new feathers in that direction. See, like I'm stopping here. Get rid of that guy. Get rid of this guy. Boom. Now we've got a good stick. Go ahead and find another stick, or if you have a hatchet of some type, pound this into the ground, and you're going to want to pound it however far you need for your pot and your soil. My soil is quite thick in this area, whereas in the Ugly Woodcraft video, the first one, it was very sandy, so I needed a extremely long stick. I don't need a long stick here. I need about that much into the ground. I'm going to go ahead and pound that into the dirt here, and I'll get back to you. All right, gang, now it's time to talk about the actual Y branch stick. Okay. <clears throat> there are concepts that I've thought about, you know, skinning this joker up because it's going to be the closest thing over the fire and on down the line. But what I like to do with these, especially if I have a water source around me, is I like to dip this part in water so that way it does not burn and all this flesh will suck up water. Okay. But before we even get into that, sorry about that, I dropped my, my bank line. I'm going to set that by my foot so we don't lose it. Put in my chair. All right, so look, I'm sure if you're at this point, you know what a seven notch is, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you anyway, okay? You're gonna find a point that you want a stopper to be, okay? Now you don't necessarily need a saw for this, but it does make it cleaner. And then you go ahead and you cut into that piece of wood as deep as you need. If it's really deep, that's when I'd say, go ahead and get yourself a saw, some type. <clears throat> or a very sharp axe or whatever or a hatchet or whatever so you see I've made my my cut right there right I've made it right here see that all right now I'm gonna go from behind it so here it is this is the end of the pot hanger this will be over the fire I'm gonna come to the right of that okay so I'm gonna go towards my right hand if you're doing this right-handed you're gonna look like this I'm gonna go towards my left hand so you're gonna make your stop notch okay best way to do this is like this <clears throat> Because they're left and right handed people out there. You're holding your hand, your stick hand needs to have the Y branch facing away from your body. Okay? Your knife hand needs to go towards your stick hand about an inch. Okay? Once you do that, go ahead and start carving towards your stop, your, your, your stop cut is what it's called. That cut we just made, okay? So that's basically what I'm doing. You see, I went to the stop cut and now there's already a little baby lip. You're gonna keep on a carving until you get the lip that you need for your pot and if it needs to be wider or smaller then you make a wider or smaller seven notch for yourself okay now if you're looking at this video today and you haven't already seen my passive fishing video I implore you to learn how to do the seven notch with your spare time go grab some sticks out of the woods around your house or whatever out your backyard and just cut stop notches in it. Be careful now, but if you're looking to do the passive fishing video that's coming up here in a couple days, you're gonna need to know how to make a seven notch or you're not gonna have a good time. Now my seven notches for this particular event, I like to have a little bit of a round in them, okay? Do not mistake that for acceptable if you're doing something like passive fishing that will get in your way, okay? But for now, it's okay. I got my seven notch in here. That's gonna hold my pot, okay? Now, my particular pot has a wide handle. So, I'm gonna go back a little bit farther with you guys. So I know for sure that my pot's gonna need a little more real estate to sit on, right? Well, that's okay. Let's make sure it has what it needs. So you can always go back farther, like I just did there, and make an even bigger stop knot. Or excuse me, another, a bigger seven. Okay, the next thing I'm going to tell you is this. I like to build my fire after I build my pot hanger. So that way I can build my fire under my pot hanger at the length, at the distance away that I want my pot to be sitting. So that I don't have to sit here and work by a fire and get smoke all in my face trying to make this while a fire with a fire brewing beside me. Okay, I make this and then I accommodate my fire to this. So once we have 
this hung up. Don't think that, you know, the, I guess to say is if you're going to start trying this and then do fire under it, build this first. Build your whole system, put it in the ground like I just did over here, and then build your fire under your pot. So put your pot up and everything, build your fire under your pot. This way you're not going to have flames, like I said, fumes all in your face, and it's going to make for a crappy time. Don't do it to yourself. I know it's tempting, but just don't do it, all right? This is the advanced part of ugly woodcraft. Again, if you're doing this, I like to leave this stick with the flesh on for two reasons. One, at the back end here, it's going to cause more friction, so that way this is the side of this is the part that you want to have all the friction. Because when we lift it up, we don't want it to get stuck on our pole, but once you set it down, you want these parts right here and everything to have friction. As well as if you soak this inside of some water, it's going to last longer because it has to burn all the steam out of it and then it'll start to burn. So inevitably, every meal, you want to take this, dip it in the water, or if you've got mud around you, cake it up with mud so that way it, it's got kind of a protective shell. You can do a lot with this. And um, it would be a great idea for you guys to um, go ahead and, and consider all of that when you're making these pot hangers. If it's a one cook fire, do what you want. But um, if you're going to be at a fixed camp for a day or two, consider what I just said. So let's go ahead and make our uh, little branch back here now I'm gonna go over here to the right and I'm gonna get this sized up for the particular uh, stick that I am using all right now as we all know <clears throat> the bottom of the stick in the ground is gonna be wider than the top stick so don't go don't go over here to the top stick and stick this on here and then say all right that's all I need because then you can't go down you want to go about three quarters of the way down your stick and then figure out how wide you need the backs got your stick like I said at the top here we know that it's the skinniest so I'm not gonna do this and then uh, if I try to go down I can never go down past about right here because the sticks can get wider right so what you're gonna do is you're gonna come down here about three quarters of the way where your where your pot is gonna be pretty much on the fire at the ground okay and that's where you're gonna want to say okay cool that's where I want my pot hanger to be right so we now know that Let's go ahead and figure out how wide that stick needs to be to do such a thing and then pull it back over the top. So we need ours to be here on my particular device. Now, the next thing I'm going to tell you is not to waste a lot of time back here, okay? Do not go and tie a, an angled lashing or anything like that. Just tie a bushcraft zip tie or something simple like that maybe even two uh in this particular one i'm going to be using two uh double half hitches nice and neat but two double half hitches why because you just don't need that much cordage back here you're wasting a lot of time and a lot of cordage in the woods as a woodsman you're trying to conserve your resources that that bank line is non-renewable that um whatever you're going to use it's non-renewable unless you make it off the land so go ahead and um make your double half hitches here I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, Joseph. So now you have your pretty pot hanger. Back here, I've, I've stuck in the ground <clears throat> two adjustment knobs. And what I mean by adjustment knobs is I stick them back to back so I don't have to use cordage, like you see in other videos, to make this stiff. And whenever I need to go lower than this, I can just move these two sticks out of the way and let this go down below it, and then I can stick them back in place, okay? A lot of people waste a lot of time tying knots down in that end. I don't, okay? And that's just preference. You don't have to do that. And there you go. Now you got your pot hanger, okay? So I went ahead and tied my seven knots here. I'm going to go ahead and get my pot and show you what I'm talking about. So we got our pot now. Here's our pot, whatever type you like. And you can set your pot over the fire let it do its thing okay so that you can have a fire up off the ground as opposed to sticking it down into a hollow or whatever like I'm in a pine forest so I need my fires to be up I actually like to take some of this uh, this green wood here and I'm gonna make a base under this so that way my fire is kind of up off the ground they just did a burn here and what that base is gonna do is it's not gonna allow the embers to get to the roots of that pine tree 
and then start burning underground. That, that, that's happened before. I've seen that before. I've never caused it, but I've seen it happen. So I'm going to go ahead and take some of this wood here, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and make myself a little base, and then we're going to make our fire for cooking. Now, the reason why I, like the, I don't mind the base is because I can just move my pot hanger higher, like so. And if I want my pot to cool off with the air, I can just slide it off the, off the coals and let it do its thing up off the ground. The ants can't get to it. It's too close to a fire for them to get up this. So if you, let's say you're out, another practicality to this, okay? You're the camp cook for the day in a two-man team or a three-man team or whatever. And uh, today you're staying in camp and you're cooking. You need to go off and do something real quick. You got your fire going. This is a bigger style of this. And you got ants in the area. You're here in the south, okay? It doesn't matter because... The ants cannot get to it because it is too hot. It's too close to the fire, and it's suspended off the ground. You're going to keep the crawlies off of this and with a pot head. And with the head of a pot here, you're not going to have to worry about that. Now, all this to be said, let's go ahead and get our little fire going. Make sure as you guys can see, I have my little bundle here ready. This is all just dried material I collected today. And I've got my very serum rod and striker. So I also have a candle over here, and the reason why I have that candle is in case this goes out for some reason, while it's in the lighting process, I can grab a flame, and if this manages to go out, I don't have to go source more tender. I can just get that candle lit and have that as a sure flame, and I don't have to even use anything else. Let's get into it. Oh, come on. One more time. some flame going. I can tell I'm going to need that, that candle today. Let's see if I can get the candle lit. Boom, candle's lit. In the event that we need the candle, which we do, look at that. So now we can take our candle and get this bitch back going again. So you didn't have to waste any time or effort doing anything because you had your candle. Now, Someone's going to say, you know, Dakota, why did you need a candle? Well, I didn't necessarily need... Go out, buddy. Wow. I forgot that's a good candle. I didn't need the candle, guys. I did that on purpose to show you that the candle has value and you should really carry one. Now I'm going to go ahead and start doing what my favorite type of fire is. It's called a log cabin. At least that's what I was, that's what I was told it was called as a kid. So that's what I call it now as an adult. A log cabin fire so I used to literally think that this is the only fire you could use if you lived in a log cabin as well just a fun fact let that guy build up a little bit um, got some good smoldering ashes going here there we go blow her into a flame get the little dinks running in here Top. Now, it doesn't seem like it right now, but all the wood around here is wet. Um, they just put out a burn about two days ago, so the wood's still kind of damp. I'm kind of hoping that it overcomes itself here today while I try to make this video. There we go. Alrighty. Now, again, guys, that candle, like you just seen, is a real lifesaver if you're not amazing at, at making fires. My whole life, I haven't been the best in the world. I'm not going to sit there and say I sucked, but this candle has kept me alive on many occasions, just needless to say. And um, don't be afraid to have a fail-safe, guys. Making, if you don't have a fail-safe, that tells me about where, that tells me where you are as a woodsman. People that don't have fail-saves are typically people that think they have something to prove in the community and are not very good woodsmen. People that have fail-saves have been in situations where not having it has almost cost them their lives or their limbs. And um, don't be afraid to have a fail-safe because it really does, like I said, it, it shows your capabilities more than you believe. And, um, yeah. Go ahead and get my stuff repacked here and get myself prepared for lunch because I'm actually getting quite hangry and uh, I don't like being hangry so let's get ourselves ready for a good lunch uh, we earned it mm -hmm.
get our pot. Oh, my life. Well, this is another part about being in the woods, guys. You're going to make mistakes from time to time, and you're going to have to learn to deal with them. Let's pick our fire up. We're going to lose it. That sucks to be me. Bad decision to Dakota here. Making just that. Bad decision. Come on, little, little fire fire. Stay alive, please. I can give you a derler. That burnt a little bit, y'all. In case anybody was wondering. See, this is the examples stage. Someone's going to ask, why didn't you just edit that out? Well, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has to learn from them. And if you can learn from mine so you don't make them to begin with, that'd be nice. There we go. See, look at that, y'all. We saved our fire. We're so awesome. We're totally cool. We're the Avengers now. All right. Get our little pot hanger over here. See if we can vindicate ourselves from that recent mess up there. Now, you see my pot hanger? I didn't make enough of a, of a stopper for this particular pot. So I'm going to have to go deeper before I can even cook my meal. That's fine. You know, it's you can't always do everything right and this is actually a good example of what happens when you don't test something before you use it you just assume it works because you may have done it a hundred times like i have but then you come around to find out that it does not work and you need it to be better and now i'm sitting here while i could be cooking my meal fiddling with a device that i've made a million times anyone in the woods can mess up at any time as you just seen me do twice Let's see and that's the ticket y'all yep that's our boy i am going to push our fire over another cool thing about putting your fire on something like this is you can adjust your fire not something you can really do with other things that have been created in the woods in the past. Um, let's get our let's get our water inside of our pot here and get it going, so we can have some luscious lunch. Now this is another instance of where you need to pick your pot right. The particular pot that I brought today is not the best option for what I'm about to do, but nonetheless, because I like to do dumb things. I am going to try and use it and just kind of see what happens. Boop. Round and around and around and around we go. Boop. Kind of slide right off the fire. Right off into the fire. It's going to happen. But it's okay because. Uh, this video is more for you guys than for me at this point. Alrighty. Get my campsite a little more tidied up because it's getting a little messy. And I don't like that. Um, I'm also getting quite hungry, honestly. I was out here for about an hour and a half uh, looking to see about a friend of mine coming out here to do some passive fishing here in about three or four days. Which is kind of why I'm over here in this little hollowed out spot and not in a better campsite than I am. And uh, this is definitely not the uh, most premium place I have ever decided to make camp, I can tell you that. But nonetheless, it is still okay, better than nothing. Much better than nothing. Um, I've had nothing before, and I can tell you this is a little more appetizing than nothing. So, now I will tell you something that I just thought about. You could tie a stop knot right here if you ever mess this up and you don't feel like doing with a seven notch. This is going to be covered by fire, so or by a pot. It's not going to be directly impinged into fire, so you could put a stop notch on here. In fact, I might go ahead and do that while we're sitting here goofing off with this fire stand by 
our stop knot. Now that we've got a fire bigger than the state of New York, I think uh, we should be good. Yep, there's our little stop knot. It's working. Ow, I'm burning myself to death. And our fire is booming. Now, at some point it'll, it'll die down and, and that's okay. And like I said, I have a bunch of wood all around me, so I didn't even have to walk to get any of this. I'm just taking it up right here. I'm sitting down around it, and uh, yeah, that one's really wet. Well, I'm gonna put that on there now so that I can honestly, I'm not gonna let that one. It's a little bit too much fire for me, but uh, there you go, guys. Um, your pot is hanging up now. I talked in my, my pot videos, my um, mess kit video about this the stainless steel being a little more forgiving and it is and the reason why i brought this up now is because it's not going to boil nearly as fast as my stain as my uh, aluminum one that big red gave me or the older one that i had as a child good appreciate it yep we're almost at a boil so we'll let her keep going she's about where we want her and again you see that I didn't make my seven notch very well, but you can always improvise. Um, that little that little timber hitch I just put on the tip there is uh, holding my pot on quite well, actually. Um, I might even advise that if you don't have time to put a uh, seven notch in, or you're not very good at it, you could just use a timber hitch if you have an abundance of cordage. Now, here's the negative thing about this bush pot I have here. The aluminum one is going to lose heat just as fast as it allows heat to pass, which means you're going to be able to eat off this joker significantly faster than... Uh, you're going to be able to eat off the aluminum significantly faster than you will the stainless steel because it's going to hold heat and disperse heat. Um, this is another reason why I tell you all to bring gloves into the field. I like to bring leather gloves because I can hold my bush pots. I can grab stuff off the fire that will typically burn the living dog mess out of your hands, and you can still do it. Um, and even, like I said, this fire that I have right this moment is a bit big for me, personally. I'm not... I could have gone with a smaller fire, honestly. I, I did it in the last video. I had an extremely small fire. Um, and the reason why I'm that way is because I just don't like to dabble like, like right now i have to attend to this fire i can't walk away i can't use the bathroom and uh it's getting to the point now where it's becoming a fire that i could actually warm myself with so in the summertime once that hits i'm gonna be you know burning myself up so to speak but uh for now it'll be okay I'll go ahead and pull this guy off i'm about to add some more weight to our pot so you'll see it happen um in real time here in uh, the lovely Tuskegee National Forest. This is what we're eating today, by the way, guys. Rice and beans with peppers and Mexican seasoning. These are sides that you can purchase from Walmart or Kroger or wherever you like to get your food from. Let us get our foodie food in here. Mix it around. Make sure that it is good and stirred. And then we will put it back on the fire. Yep, it's good and stirred up. Pick her up. Slide the bale back up so it kind of gives itself some stability. We're gonna adjust our little pot the hanger so that our pot is not in the fire, but less over it. Yeah. Boop. Like so. Hope you're enjoying the video, y'all. I know it's another long one. These ugly woodcraft videos, I'm going to show you how to make something, and then I'm going to show it to you in use over a period of time. And the reason why I like to make these videos longer, I know you guys don't like to see a long video, but at the end of the day, um, you got to kind of see it work for you to trust it. That's with anything. And we're here in the field in real time with all the mistakes and all the, all the shortcomings and all the good moments. 
combined. You know, I'm not hiding anything from you guys, so you don't have to worry about me, you know, lying to you or whatever you're worried about. You can see it for what it is, good and bad. Um, and I know I'm aggravating some people by burning that, but today it just, I don't have anywhere to put it in the car, and there's ants out everywhere, so for me to hold on to it and let my bag sit on the ground would be catastrophic. So today I'm just going to go ahead and burn it. Um, I do my best to not have to put myself in that predicament. In fact, I usually carry a Ziploc bag to put all my trash in so that it doesn't have a scent or anything and nobody, nothing gets in my bag. But I just didn't bring it today. I just didn't prepare well. Um, I did not follow my, my storyline of the six Ps. Proper preparation will prevent piss poor performance. And today, that is exactly what I am doing, is performing poorly um, due to my pro improper preparation. I would wager to bet that it's almost done already. Let's go. Find out. I'm going to a little even, Dakota. Let's try putting it on even ground for five seconds. How about that? Oh boy, look how beautiful that is. Tell me I'm wrong. Wow. Just beautiful. Guys, these sides make an amazing lunch. I'm not a big uh, heavy eater. This rice is probably the heaviest I will ever eat in the summertime. And it's because this morning was 62 degrees and the middle of the day is going to be like 80 in the sun. So it's still like 71 over here. It's still cool enough to enjoy this warm meal before I get out of here and then after this this one here you're going to start seeing me transfer to like non-cook meals where I'm mostly cooking you know if I'm cooking anything it's going to be wild game that I've caught that I've caught and um oh, oh there there oh, just a little bit longer She's almost done. It's gonna be great, guys. It's gonna be good. Get some little baby sticks on here. Get me a little flame going just one more time. And I think that'll be it for our little fire fire there. A little fur. Rachon. Rachondo. Let's see what else we got about us here. Almost had enough for a perfectly sized fire the whole time. Actually, here we go. Yep. There we go. Nature provides. All you must do is ask. Boop. Get in there nice and comfortable. And slide it on in. Boop. Just like that, y'all. Keep cooking again. Now, y'all are seeing me blow that back to life like you just seen. I don't know if you can tell that the fire just came back or not, but it did. Um, I'm going to be making something pretty cool here soon that will help you all out with that. Um, and I think you will all enjoy it. Return, my friend. Yes. Burn. Now, mind you, the green around you, by the way, and I know I'm just talking randomly, that's kind of what I'm going to be doing on these ugly bushcraft videos, or ugly woodcraft videos, but uh, we're in the same spot that we talked about the Blackie Thomas Haversack. Uh, the green is coming back. You can see over here, right here, along this, all the oaks and stuff that were being killed off by the immense amount of foliage that is not native to Alabama is burnt down and the oaks and the pines are finally growing back healthily and giving them an opportunity to raise up out of the ground and actually grow. That's what these burns are about. See, we introduced the, we introduced plants a long time ago that weren't supposed to be here that ended up killing a natural population. So when I hear people say, oh my god, the burns are killing things. Yeah, they're killing things that are not supposed to be here. Um, so 
you just take that into consideration? I'm pretty sure that's going to be lunch, y'all. Yep, that's her. Video's getting kind of long. And um, I'm going to go ahead and get some food in my system. Once I do that, we'll take some pictures of the local area. And then I'll show you a picture of the campsite. And we will move forward after that. Let me get some food in my system. And if you're wondering what it looks like, y'all, better not grab that the way I'm expecting it. That's lunch. It's a lot of lunch, but it's lunch. And um, it's looking really good. So I'm going to dig in. See you in a little bit. Alright guys, so I went ahead over to that little pond right over there, got this cleaned out. Once I get it cleaned out, I typically fire burn it, so I kill anything that could possibly be alive in there. Um, and what I mean by that is any bacteria or protozoa that may have lived in that water is getting literally incinerated right now. And um, at a certain point, I have to ask myself, when is genocide too much genocide? <laughs> anyway... I'm going to go ahead and get this guy off the fire. He's been on there for about 20 minutes. That's about how long I leave him on there. Same time as I leave, as I leave a burn. I want to step back here and explain something to y'all. Okay. I'll be back in this area. So I'm not going to take this down. But I will get rid of this fire. And I will be stowing my uh, little chair legs right by this fire. And I will clean up the area. Now like I was telling you before. Look at all this natural wood just laying on the ground beside me. This is a great spot for me to come out and do these day videos for y'all because I'm away from the world and I have a lot of resources to teach you with. It's not because I don't feel like going to a new spot every time. It's because I want to be able to teach y'all and know what I have access to before I start the lesson. So like I said, guys, cleaning up my pot there and then I'm going to go ahead and put this fire out, show you a picture of before and after, and we'll get on out of here. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this pot hanger video. Uh, soon we'll be doing one on how to actually hang a, uh, not just a pot hanger, but also a bushcraft grate. And you can use the same stick, and I'll show you how you do that. Stay tuned for it. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.